Hello, everyone. Hi. So um, we have heard a lot about blockchain, AI, IoT, 5G. And I'm here to talk about something now completely different, a completely new way to see our future. Um, I am Andre Schwerp. I'm associate professor at the University of Malta in quantum physics. Uh, so if you have any quantum physics problems, I'm the guy to come ask. Now, I want to try and dispel a bit of the hype that there is surrounding quantum technologies in general, because we tend to think about them as either something that will never arrive or something that will solve everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on two specific applications of quantum technologies, which I believe are the future and which will change everything. They will change how we do computing and how we communicate with each other. Now, a, a bit of a word of warning, because whenever we hear the word quantum on the media, it's kind of often bandied about like this kind of superpower. Um, even in the movies, you know, quantum something means we can do everything that we want, which is good for me, because that makes me Superman, I guess. Uh, but from the other perspective, it's not good, because uh, there really is a lot behind uh, quantum technologies. There's a lot of science, and it's not just us just putting the word quantum in front of things. It is us using the laws of the universe in a completely different way to come up with completely new technologies. Now, just to motivate what's going on, um, imagine we spend our entire lives constrained to a flat plane. Okay, we can move backward, forwards, left and right, but we can never go up and we can never go down. And this is a bit like the situation we find ourselves at the moment with our ordinary technologies. They've got certain constraints that we've imposed upon them. Now, with quantum technologies, it's like someone is kind of reaching, up to, uh, reaching down to us and kind of pulling us out from this flat space and showing us that there is an up and down, that there is more that we can do with our technologies. And just to, just to cement the visual image uh, that I'd like you to keep in mind, uh, quick question. Have you all seen the movie Inception? Yes, OK, a few nods. That's fantastic. So there's a scene from the movie where the city kind of folds in over itself. OK? If you remember that scene, this is what I'm talking about here. So there's this photographer who takes pictures of famous landmarks and gives them the Inception treatment. Now, if I had to ask you, which is the quickest way to cross that bridge? If I was someone on the street over there, the quickest way is cross the bridge. There's nothing else. But with our God's eye perspective here, seeing that this picture is kind of bent in over itself, there is a quicker way. We can kind of cut across, not go along the bridge, and get there quicker. This is the power that quantum technologies give us. Now, those of you who know me know that I am constantly eating and constantly hungry. Uh, so one of my things is, I, I, as soon as lunch will open, I'll go straight, straight to lunch. So let's take this as a, as, a, as, a, as a kind of a problem that I want my computer to solve. I want my computer to take me to lunch as quickly as possible. Now, because my computer is not quantum, it's got some rules that it obeys. And in this case, the rules are I can only move horizontally and vertically. So the quickest way I can get to lunch, well, I need two steps to do that. I need to go one step horizontally, one step vertically, so two steps. With quantum computers, the rules go out of the door, and I can build a quantum bypass that takes me to, to lunch straight in one step. What this means, effectively, is that we have created a, a kind of a computer that allows us to get a, an algorithm that takes two steps in the best possible scenario and shrink it to one step, which sounds well, not that exciting, I have to be honest with you. But if we keep repeating this, we can go from four steps to two, keep repeating, keep repeating, go from 1,000 steps to 10, and we can keep repeating this. And it's this exponential speed up that quantum computers promise for certain problems that makes them so much better at solving these problems than any other technology that we have. Now, some of these problems involve creating new drugs, creating new medicines. And this is one aspect where quantum computers will really come to their own. Another of these problems is uh, breaking into encrypted communications. Now, this is a bit of a problem, because what quantum computers promise to do is to make breaking into communications as easy as pie. 
So instead of taking 10,000, 100,000, a million years to break into someone's communication, we can suddenly break into it in a matter of hours or perhaps a day. So this is a problem. And, and, and just to illustrate the scale of the problem, let me show you a picture of the world as a telecommunications engineer sees it. Okay? So that's a picture of the world. And those yellow lines over there, those are optical fibers. Those are what connects the world together. That's basically what the internet runs on. If anything had to happen to that infrastructure, we'd be a lot more primitive than we are nowadays. Now, what I'm saying is all of that communication, every single thing that's going through those fibers, can be broken into as soon as we have quantum computers which is a problem because connected to that network are our electricity grids, there are our telecommunications networks, there are all our clouds, there is everything. So we have a problem. And how do we solve this? So we have a situation where quantum computers can give us new drugs, that's a positive thing, but they can also break into all our communication systems, that's a negative thing. So let's fight quantum with quantum and create a way of having um, completely unbreakable communications. Now, we can do this using quantum communications. So in the same way as the internet is based on packets of information, quantum communications are based on something called entanglement. Now, I don't have the time to go through what entanglement is, but just to give you a visual image, I can create a pair of objects in this entangled state. I keep one, and I send you the other one. The two of us do some quantum voodoo, and by the end of it, we get a random code that we can use to encrypt and decrypt information. Now, this random code is created in two places at the same time. That's the quantum part of it. That's the magic. Because it's created in two places at the same time, I've never sent it to you. You've never sent it to me. Anyone in between cannot have access to this code. And this suddenly makes all our communications completely unbreakable, not just to people who live now and have current day technology, but any technology that will ever come in the future, whether it's by humans or by aliens or by anyone else. So we can give absolute bulletproof, 100% security on our communications. So quantum, communica quantum technologies can help us in many different ways, and they can solve some of the problems that they themselves bring forward. Now, this is not science fiction. So we built one of these links recently between Malta and Sicily uh, over the Melita network. So thanks to them. I don't know if there's anyone here from Melita in the audience. But we built it over their network. And this goes to show that we are now coming to an age where quantum technologies are entering the marketplace. And our telecommunications network will soon be uh, upgraded to support these kinds of, uh, these kinds of technologies. Um, now, just as an anecdote, in performing this exper experiment, we broke the world record twice. So there's some interesting work going on in terms of research at the University of Malta as well that you might want to keep an eye on. So this is, this is pretty much the state of the art. Now, what's happening is that the environment around this is, is creating uh, a, an entire ecosystem, an entire marketplace that, that will push these technologies forward very soon. And in fact, this is a picture from uh, last June at the Digital Assembly in Bucharest, where seven countries, including Malta on the right-hand side, uh, we signed a declaration saying that we're going to put together as a world first, we're going to put together an a network spanning the entirety of the European Union that will be ultra secure and held secure by the laws of quantum physics. So it's going to be the, f the world's first quantum internet. Okay, so this is something which we're working towards as a, as a, as a, European, com as a European Union and something which we're very br proud to be part of. So I am running out of time, and I want to, I just want to leave you with, with, with this to keep in mind. Quantum technologies do things in a way that is completely different to ordinary technologies. They allow us to do things faster. They can make us, help us create computers that work a lot faster than once we have at the moment. They can allow us to break communications, which is a bad thing. 
but they can also give us super secure communications. Now, there's other kinds of quantum technologies that I didn't have time to go into, like super sensitive sensors that are very useful for the oil industry, for example, and there's a few others. Um, but I just wanted to give you an idea of the potentials and give you an idea that the future really is quantum. So with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention. Uh, you can reach me. Um, there's my email address. There's my Twitter account. There's my group website. I, I'm going to be here all day. Um, and now what I want to do is I want to move straight from this talk into the panel because we have a panel discussion about AI, blockchain, and quantum and how these technologies are converging together. So thank you for your attention, and I invite you to stick around for the next 20 minutes.